Welcome. Um, I'm Jenny Shampo, the director of the Book of Mormon Art Catalog. Um, sorry. Is that okay? Can you guys hear me okay? Um, let's give Ashley a round of applause. I just... <laughs> really has made this uh, BYU art contest happen, um, this Book of Mormon art contest. She's done all, all the logistics and, and the like, work of getting it going, and I've really enjoyed working with her on this project, and I'm grateful to her for all her work. Um, so I want to just start um, with the Book of Mormon art catalog and, and how this whole thing started. So yesterday, we commemorated the 200th anniversary of um, the Angel Moroni's first visit to uh, Joseph Smith. And in that 200 years since then, the Book of Mormon has, has meant a lot of things to a lot of people and has been studied and, and analyzed. Um, but what's really interesting is that until very recently, there just wasn't very much art based on content from the Book of Mormon. Um, uh, so it really wasn't until the 1870s that we started to see some art done um, about the Book of Mormon. This was 40 years after the book had been published before we start seeing art. Uh, the one I'm showing here is by CCA Christensen. Uh, this is uh, from a, a panorama he did. It had 11 scenes. I mean, this one shows Mormon and Moroni uh, guarding the place, hiding them in a cave, or, or maybe pulling them back out as the battle um, edges closer to keep them safe um, as their civilization is, is nearing collapse. Uh, and then, so there's this little flurry of activity in the 1870s through 1890s uh, where artists were kind of, uh, for the very first time, trying to visualize the Book of Mormon. And then after that, in the first half of the 20th century, there really wasn't much Book of Mormon art at all, just a handful of artists doing kind of one-off sort of projects, but nothing more systematic um, in approaching the Book of Mormon. Until we get to the 1950s, um, and then there are the famous Arnold Freeberg. Uh, you, you, you probably are all familiar with the, the 12 Book of Mormon paintings he did. And you may not know that he also did a lot of drawings of Book of Mormon figures and scenes. Uh, a lot of them were unfinished, uh, never fully realized as, as finished products. This one is a drawing he did of Nephi's family, uh, some of the characters, Lehi and, and Sariah there in the front. Um, at the same time, you had Minerva Tyker in the early 1950s trying to systematically go through the Book of Mormon and, and, and visualize scenes that really hadn't been depicted before. This one of, of Alma baptizing is actually on view um, in the Minerva Tyker exhibit up at the Church uh, History Museum up in Salt Lake City. I encourage you to go see it. And then again, there's really not much going on after that besides those two until we get to the 1970s. And then the Church Correlation Department commissions hundreds of images from Jerry Thompson and Robert Barrett um, for this uh, Book of Mormon Stories manual. Uh, and uh, then again, there's not much going on after that until about the 90s. And then um, some curators at the Church History Museum, Richard Owen, uh, were really working to get more international artists into the collection. Um, and so there's a little, there's a spike in um, Book of Mormon art in the 1990s. And then just in the past, 10 or 15 years, it's just exploded. There's been tons of Book of Mormon art from all over the world, uh, but it's never really been systematically gathered. Uh, here's a little, um, th this is a little, it's, it's a little deceiving because this is the, you see that 1970s spike because of the 800 um, Book of Mormon stories images there. Um, but you do also see just the 1870s, that little blip there, and then the 1950s with Freeberg and and Tyker, um, and then just recently, just a whole bunch more all of a sudden. Um, so I wanted to sort of understand these trends and why we were seeing the Book of Mormon art that we see and how it developed over time. Um, and that's why I started the Book of Mormon art catalog to make this the central repository for the art. Uh, it's a free um, open access digital database. It's bookofmormonartcatalog.org. Um, we've got some flyers in the back with the little QR code to take you right there. Um, and uh, we have almost 4,000 images from 51 countries and about 700 unique artists in there. So there's really exciting art going on. Um, a lot of it that just isn't familiar to, to most people. Um, and as I was gathering these, these images for the catalog, 
it, it reveals some gaps in, in what we have in Book of Mormon art. Um, one thing I noticed was that there are certain topics that get a lot of attention. Um, so Christ in Ancient America and Lehi's Dream, um, just obviously how like, a, lot of, a lot of people try to visualize those um, and not make sense. Uh, but then some of these others, um, so these 20 that I've listed here are, they represent half of the images in the catalog. Um, and uh, so half of them are just these 20 scenes. Um, there's a lot more obviously in the Book of Mormon that just isn't being visualized as much. Same thing with figures, um, for which figures are being depicted. Nephi is the most frequently depicted figure in Book of Mormon art. Um, and then there are some figures that we really just don't see at all, um, or hardly at all. Um, and, and I think this is important because um, when we see art that's um, only about certain people or certain stories, or art that's always done the same way, um, when there may be different angles or approaches or interpretations of that scene, um, then, then we start to only talk about it that way. Um, Here's three pictures of um, uh, Abinadi and, um, and King Noah, done by three different artists in three very different time periods. They all look very similar. Um, and I, I think a greater variety of art is important to, especially in our global church, to help people feel connected to the Book of Mormon and, um, and to the art and to bring them closer to Christ. Um, and through the gathering of this Book of Mormon art catalog, I've been able to see there are some artists trying to um, reach out in different ways and uh, portray people differently or just um, think a little more deeply about the stories and how we might be able to um, um, liken them to ourselves. Uh, and so as Ashley and I were working on putting together this art contest, we thought let's try to fill in some of these gaps. So we especially ask um, students to think about art that uh, showcased underrepresented figures and scenes, used unique styles or, or materials or techniques. And then third, um, highlighted a, a diversity of people and cultures. And the students here at BYU really responded to that call. We got 95, 96 submissions. Um, and not just from art majors, from art, students from 39 different disciplines here at BYU who submitted. Um, these are our three winners. Uh, first place here is uh, Joseph Chu who did uh, In Christ We Are Made Alive. And we really liked that this was not really a narrative um, illustration, right? It's not a specific moment from the Book of Mormon, but more of a conceptualization of the overall meaning of the Book of Mormon, the, the message that um, Christ can, um, can heal and, and redeem each of us. Uh, so we see Christ here. You'll have to look at this up close. We have the artworks here tonight. It looks like they, they're all in the back here. So afterwards, make sure you look up close and um, you can see some tree of life symbolism that the artist has included here in the figure of Christ and as he's raising um, this figure up from, from the earth. And then second place was Sierra Newbold um, with uh, the journey of the Jaredites uh, in an ancient Sumerian style. And I thought this was just graphically really stunning but also I liked that she was really getting into the text and you know, thinking about well, where did these Jaredites come from and they didn't come out of Jerusalem with Lehi and we know they came um, out of the Tower of Babel and you know, maybe what, what might their art and their culture have looked like? How might they have portrayed themselves? Um, so we thought we really liked the way she was getting, getting into the text and thinking deeply there. And then finally, um, the charcoal drawing is called And They Were Strong. Um, is it Taya Bassard? Is that, I don't know if I'm saying the name right. I'm sorry. Uh, this, this little charcoal drawing is of a, uh, a, a Nephite woman, uh, one, a member of Lehi's family. So in, in the Book of Mormon, we know that Nephi has a wife. We know there's the daughters of Ishmael. Nephi probably had sisters. None of them are named. Uh, and maybe because of that, we hardly ever see them in the visual art. And so we liked that this uh, very clearly focused on one of these women uh, who went through this experience in the wilderness bearing children. Um, we liked that it's done in charcoal, which is a very natural medium, uh, maybe referencing even her own experience in the wilderness close to the earth. 
And I really love the, um, the directness of her gaze and the strength that it shows, contrasted with the tenderness as she, as she holds her baby there. Um, so I, I won't go through all of them, but we also have our six honorable mentions uh, in the back for you to look at, and, and all the rest are also in an online catalog at the Maxwell Institute website and are going into the Book of Mormon art catalog, and I'm just really excited about that. Um, I wanna just share this student quote. This is from Nathan Peterson, who submitted a really neat um, 3D printed Stripling Warriors uh, entry. He's an information technology major here at BYU. And he said, overall, this project, or this art project, enhanced my knowledge and appreciation of the Book of Mormon allowing me to develop a stronger connection to its teachings and apply them in meaningful ways. Um, and that, you know, that's really been my experience with this uh, contest and with the art catalog too, that um, the art has helped me understand the Book of Mormon in new ways and has helped me explore it in a way I never have before. And, um, and I'm really grateful for that and grateful for artists who are helping me um, visualize it. Okay. Um, how do I close? <laughs> I don't know. Is this, it feels like a church meeting, but I don't. I don't know. Well, thank you. <laughs>